and welcome to Inside Politics. I'm John King. To our viewers in the United States and around the world, thank you for sharing your Sunday. We begin with the question that rattled financial markets and the President of the United States this past week. Is the American economy, growing for more than a decade now, suddenly at risk of stalling, even tipping into recession? There is no guarantee of that, but there are plenty of warning signs. Let's take a look. This past week, if you hadn't heard it before, you may have heard the term inverted yield curve. What does that mean? It costs more to borrow long term than short term. That's backwards. And when that happens, you see it happening here this past week. You see it happening here in 2007, the last time it happened. And go back through history. When it happens, recessions normally around the corner. That's why many people in the markets and many economists say it is possible, not definite, but possible the U.S. economy is headed toward a recession. That is one indicator. Because of that, we had a roller coaster week on Wall Street, down because of trade concerns, up a little bit after those appeared to be ameliorated some. Then at this here, this was inverted yield curve day, 800 points the market lost. Then modest gains to end the week, a volatile week in the financial markets, which we know many of you watch, and of course the president watches very closely. Some of this is beyond the control of any American president or the U.S. economy. The German and the U.K. economies contracted in quarter two, a warning sign they could be headed into recession. There's the possibility of a no-deal Brexit. That has the world worried about what's going to happen there. And Chinese industrial production at a 17-year low, the world's second largest economy, slowing down in part because of the trade war. Here at home, economic signals a bit more mixed. In the second quarter, consumer spending was up. Consumer spending is a huge piece of the American economy. And the Trump administration says this is proof to them there's not really a recession threat ahead. But Business investment dropped in the second quarter. That is a potential sign of trouble. And the University of Michigan's barometer of consumer sentiment dropped 6.4%. This, to many people, suggests if consumers are getting nervous and this turns around, that could be a trouble sign ahead. So if you've been through this before, jobs are lost in recessions. Businesses die. Investments tank. Home values plummet. And voters get cranky. The last time we had a one-term president, George H.W. Bush, he could not convince voters a relatively mild recession was over. And it was. So how worried is the current president? Well, he blinked and hit the pause button on his escalating trade war with China. That was Tuesday, even before that most alarming warning, the inverted yield curve of potential trouble ahead. We're doing this for Christmas season, uh, just in case some of the tariffs would have an impact on U.S. customers, but so far they've had virtually none. But just in case they might have an impact on people, uh, what we've done is we've delayed it so that they won't be relevant to the Christmas shopping season. With us this Sunday to share their reporting and their insights, Julie Pace of the Associated Press, Neil Irwin of the New York Times, and Gina Smalik, also of the New York Times. So when you look at the data, help me, what do you look for now looking forward after just being through a very tumultuous week? <laughs> what are you looking for in the days and weeks ahead that says, okay, They've managed to land this plane short of recession, maybe a bit of a global slowdown, but short of recession or the snowball's starting to go down the hill. So this is kind of the moment in a horror movie when uh, a lot of ominous things are happening, but nothing actually bad has happened to the characters. Uh, the, the U.S. economy, it's growing well. The job market's pretty solid. Uh, the question is, what are these leading indicators going to show? There's all these surveys of manufacturing companies, supply chain managers. There's weekly claims on, uh, on unemployment, on, on jobless claims. Uh, as we see those things over the next few weeks, months, we'll see whether this trouble in, in the trade wars with China, the slowing European economy, whether that's going to actually slow the U.S. economy or whether we can be an island in the storm. And, and the president, a lot of fingers pointed at the president, saying a lot of this volatility is called by your caused by your trade war. You decided to pick this fight with China. You said it would be over soon, and now there's no end in sight, and that's a lot of the turmoil, certainly part of the reason China's economy is slowing down. So the president says, I'm not to blame, it's the Fed. Interest rates are historically low. Is there, can the Fed do anything here to make this better, if that's the right word? So it's an interesting question. And as you noted, interest rates are already historically low. So they only have so much room to work with. But I think what we have seen is the Fed has really sort of been the bulwark that the economy has kind of rested on as this trade war has played out. So earlier this year, the Fed signaled that it was no longer going to raise rates. And that really sent stock storing. Then, then they signaled earlier this summer that they were going to cut rates in July, as they did, and that again set, set stock storing. And so they kind of have been this backstop that has helped to counteract some of these negative forces that have stoked uncertainty in the economy. Helped counteract, and yet, but it's sort of a temporary thing, if you will, right, in the sense that, yes, the Fed has done that, but 
Germany's economy, Germany's economy is still in trouble. Uh, the UK economy is still in trouble. China's economy is still slowing down. And this is all happening in the context as we head into a presidential re-election year. Uh, and again, the last one-term president we had had to deal with this. And it was a pretty mild recession back then. The White House says talk of recession is poppycock. Our economy is soaring. It's the best it's ever been. And the rest of the globe is, is stagnant or declining. And China falls in that declining category. They're struggling right now in their economy. Every number that came out this past week proved our economy is strong. Their economy is weak. The time to strike is now. It would behoove the Democrats and their complicit, compliant allies in the mainstream media to push a false narrative that we are headed toward a recession. But we are not. I think he means me and us. Um, I, think, I think he means us. And, and no one's saying that we're heading into a recession. We are saying that there are significant indicators, including statistics coming from our own government, but especially statistics coming from around the world and interest in, that show the possibility. Right. We're, we're in this situation where now you have to line the White House rhetoric up with, with data, hard, cold facts. And we know that that can always be a little bit problematic for this White House. The other thing, you know, to, to one of the points Hogan makes there is, there's a lot of talk about uh, the us versus them economy, the strength of the U.S. economy versus versus other countries. It's a global economy. I mean, the U.S. economy is so intermingled with the Chinese economy, with the European economy. So if there is weakness abroad, uh, there becomes real concern here because of because of all of those intermingling forces. The point that Hogan is making there and that, that Trump makes is that this should give the U.S. more leverage in this trade war with China. Uh, but what you know, Chinese experts say, economic experts say, is China plays a very long game, much longer than the next year and a half game, which is what Trump is playing as he looks toward, toward his reelection. So they're they're less likely to be um, to be moved by some of his his short term maneuvers than than some in the West Wing might think. Well, they obviously don't have to worry about an election. They don't have to worry about voters. Uh, so the question is, what can be done, and how much of it is in the control, whether it's of the president of the United States? Can't get anything legislatively passed. You have divided government here in Washington, whether it's the Fed can help. What levers essentially lie here and how much of this is out of the United States control because it's overseas factors. Neil, you write in the newspaper today, how would a 2020 recession happen? The trade wars and a breakdown in international economic diplomacy cause businesses around the world to pull back. That leads to further tumbles in markets and job losses, prompting American consumers to become more cautious. High corporate debt loads create a wave of bankruptcies, and central bank policy proves impotent, combined with fiscal policy that is non-existent. Chances of a near-term recession are only about one in three in the view of most forecasters, but if that does develop, the big question will be whether the usual tools to fight it are up to the task. Uh, a lot of this is, it's so complicated that the one, any one specific action, whether it's by President Trump, whether it's by the Fed, might not be enough. Yeah, and I would add that it's not just about going into recession or not going into recession. Late 2015, early 2016, there was a real contraction in the industrial sector that has some echoes of what's happening now. It was driven by forces overseas, what's going, what was going on at the time in the Chinese economy, and that probably contributed to Trump's victory. The sense that in 2016 that the economy was bad, well, in the, on the coast it wasn't bad, but in the industrial heartland it, it was in a bad spot. So there are ways that this could turn into something that is painful for a lot of Americans, really does uh, impact the election in 2020, that doesn't actually technically fall into the recession category. And if it does, that's a, that's a whole different matter. And there's a, there's a stretch, there's a lot of hyperbole and some factual errors in the White House cheerleading, if you will. But I get it to a degree, and you've seen past administrations do this, because the American consumer is such a giant piece of the machine here. And so you want to keep consumers confident you want, because you need to keep them spending. If they stop spending, you're in trouble. And I think that 1516 incidents that Neil just referenced is a perfect example here because what we saw was a real industrial pullback that didn't escalate into a recession specifically because of the consumer. Consumers spent really strongly throughout that entire period and it kept us from going into a recession. So if that should happen again, it's possible that we could avert a deeper downturn. Interesting few weeks and months ahead as we track all this up. Next for us, we shift to the world.